Hi, I am Eric Lee. Let me show you the ethical problems in peer-to-peer -peer architectures. Suppose you want to share a file with a lot of internet users. You may need to look for file sharing applications. Traditionally, this kind of applications follow a client-server design. There is one server in the network. Sometimes there are a few of them. And there are many clients it talks to. However, this structure has problems. If the server is down or its internet connection is broken, then the entire service can't work anymore. This is known as single point of failure. Also, the server does not have infinite bandwidth. Say 1000 clients are downloading something at the same time, then the average speed will be slow, because the server is the bottleneck of the network. However, it is easy for application managers to manage its users, because all the information they need can be found in like server logs. A new network architecture for sharing is peer-to-peer. -peer. You can think of it as the clients in the client-server model are talking to each other. There is still some kind of server or service for peers to find each other, but the major traffic goes directly between peers. Peer-to-peer -peer solves the problem of single point of failure in client-server. Suppose you are sharing a file with 100 users, and at some time your internet connection is gone. But if you have sent the entire file's content out to different receivers, then the receivers in peer-to-peer -peer can reconstruct the original file. This feature also makes peer-to-peer -peer networks scalable. This chart shows that if you need to send a file to a lot of users, peer-to-peer -peer networks spread it much faster than the client-server networks because the bottleneck on the sharer is gone. The easiness to share files in peer-to-peer -peer creates copyright problems as users share infringing content in peer-to-peer -peer networks. A research in 2011 shows that 11% 11 of the internet's traffic are infringing content on a popular peer-to-peer -peer network called BitTorrent. Research on users' ethical reasoning shows that they usually realize that infringing over peer-to-peer -peer is an ethical issue. However, they feel less guilty if they pay some subscription fee to use the peer-to-peer -peer system. Their belief of consumer rights and reciprocity further increases privacy in peer-to-peer -peer systems. When so many users share in a distributed system, it becomes much more difficult to stop them than in illegal sharing in client-server. Because in client-server, you just need to take the server down. The debate on how to stop infringing over peer-to-peer -peer is polarized and has been lasting for a long time. People have thought of all kinds of ways. One way copyright holders came up with is to ban the peer-to-peer -peer technology because it makes infringing so easy. However, is it worthy to ban technology just because of its potential damage to the copyright? It turns out that similar cases have happened when Sony sold a video recorder called Betamax, which can be used to pirate videos. The court decided that the technology shouldn't be banned because it has large potential uses and commercial value. However, it doesn't mean that Sony can misbehave like by advertising about the potential infringing use. Later, this is known as the Sony Doctrine. Applying this analysis, the peer-to-peer -to -peer technology also shouldn't be banned because it has powerful non-infringing uses. People have also proposed other ways. Some people think there should be harsh penalties for pirates, like cutting the internet service. They are kind of more on the copyright holder's side. Some psychological researchers think we should educate the customers about the harm of infringement. They also propose that copyright holders should make use of the new model proposed by peer-to-peer -peer and change their business model. Letting copyright holders to change and integrate into the peer-to-peer -peer sharing nature seems unrealistic in short term, so they chose to monitor users. Actually, it turns out that monitoring users in peer-to-peer -peer network is in some sense even easier than in client-server networks. A paper in 2010 shows that if you crawl the distributed hash table, which is a data structure in peer-to-peer -peer networks, 
you can track nearly 8 million IP addresses. With these IP addresses, copyright holders can map them to users. This is ironic when considering the original design of peer-to-peer, -peer, which values users' anonymity and freedom in the network. Other research shows that the government and copyright holders are really tracking peer-to-peer -peer users. Well, actually not copyright holders, but organizations like RIAA and MPAA. They create fake users on peer-to-peer -peer networks to track other users. The introduction of peer-to-peer -peer also brings two kinds of troubles to internet service providers. The direct effect comes from the asymmetric bandwidth. In a client-server model, users usually download more than upload, so ISPs optimize their network and make download bandwidth larger. But peer-to-peer -peer users usually acquire same download and upload bandwidth, which isn't friendly to ISPs' configuration. The indirect effect comes from the Digital Minimum Copyright Act. When copyright owners find infringing activities on ISPs' network, they can notify the ISP. The ISP has to take down the illegal content quickly, or it may suffer secondary liability of the infringement. That means ISPs have to invest time and money on responding to the notices. But if you think about it, they have no control to the peer-to-peer -peer technology, and their customers' use of this technology brings them trouble. This becomes more troublesome for universities, because universities act as ISPs for their students, and they are responsible for students' conduct. The law requires universities to notify students about this. For example, this is an announcement by UC Davis. Some users may be leeching, which means downloading from the peer-to-peer -peer network without uploading. Some users do this in order to save their uploading bandwidth. This behavior is considered unethical by the community because it contradicts the concept of reciprocity in peer-to-peer. -peer. If no one is willing to upload the content to the network, then peer-to-peer -peer is in no way better than client-server. However, another possible motivation is to prevent DMCA liability. Users get in trouble with DMCA because they upload the pirated content to the network. If they only download the content, there will be no problems. So users have to make a decision between ethics and the law. Though most peer-to-peer -peer networks have an open design, Xunlei follows a different way. Xunlei is a peer-to-peer -peer client designed by a Chinese company. It uses a proprietary network that has centralized control, which is usually avoided in peer-to-peer -peer network design. Research shows that it may be good for privacy control, but can harm users' privacy with over-surveillance. Xunlei also uses a weak encryption mechanism, which may allow hackers to track users' activities. People also find that Xunlei's network is trying to encapsulate other open peer-to-peer -peer networks, which becomes an ethical question because Xunlei can benefit from just proxying the other networks. There are a lot more ethical problems created by peer-to-peer -peer that can't be discussed in this 10-minute presentation. For example, peer-to-peer -peer networks can easily spread virus because everyone can share anything. Also, Microsoft Windows 10 turns on its peer-to-peer -peer service updates by default, which creates problems for local area network managers. Thank you. Here are the references for my paper and the images used in this presentation.